2020 is already a year for the history books. In the sports world, for sure, it will be remembered, and through the first two or three months, it will likely not be remembered with favor. We've already seen the unfortunate passing of an NBA legend with the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others in a tragic helicopter crash. Now sports across the board are being shut down, postponed and canceled in an attempt to stop the spread of a disease that originated in China. Without mentioning its name on YouTube, you know what it is. Even LeBron James has called for the entire year to be canceled. And the word of the year so far in 2020 is? No, it's not that one. No, the word of the year so far is retconned. It's a practice that has become quite common in popular culture in recent months and years. Retconning, by definition, is a subsequent revision of an established story in film, TV, video games, or comics. It's a fad that has caused divides in groups of fans of movies and TV shows throughout the United States and Great Britain. The rewriting of the history of longtime favorite and beloved characters and stories to make them different, and in many cases lesser characters and stories than they were, in order to favor the new characters of the current stories. With the decision by the NBA to suspend its season immediately and indefinitely at the recognition of one of its players, Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz, testing preliminarily positive for COVID-19, the league may have inadvertently retconned one of its greatest, if not its greatest, players in Michael Jordan. Sports fans of a certain age will all remember the greatness of Jordan. Just the mention of his name evokes images of an incredible shot, tenacious defense, and an air of excellence that came with his well-known work ethic and amazing God-given ability. But now certain images have to take on a different feel, specifically those from the NBA Finals in 1997. Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were in the midst of a tough series with the Utah Jazz, and it's fitting that the Jazz play into this. A series that was the first of two back-to-back finals matchups between the two, and this one was tied at 2-2 with the pivotal Game 5 in Salt Lake City. It was important to the Bulls that MJ have a great night, but something wasn't right. Michael Jordan was experiencing flu-like symptoms. Maybe the flu? Maybe not. No one really knows. It could have been another bug, or it could have just been food poisoning. But he was showing the signs of having the flu. Ultimately, Jordan powered through it with a stat line of 38 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and a block going 13 of 27 from the field and 10 of 12 from the free throw line. And at every stoppage in play, it looked as though he would collapse on the Bulls bench. Chicago would go on to win an incredible game, 90-88, to and then the series in six. But should they have? Should Jordan have even been allowed to play? Whether or not he had the flu, he was showing signs of a disease that, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has a mortality rate of 7.1%, which is nearly twice as high as that of COVID-19 in the United States. A disease that, according to the CDC, can spread to people up to six feet away. And sometimes, according to the CDC, otherwise healthy adults may be able to infect others beginning one day before symptoms develop and up to five to seven days after becoming sick. So every time Jordan was backing John Stockton down to get a good look at a shot, every time he was splitting defenders, driving through the lane for two, and every time he depended on Scottie Pippen to help him back to the bench during a timeout, every time he was potentially spreading an infectious disease. Now, none of this likely happened. Following the Game 5 win, Game 6 took place in Chicago, Jordan scored 39, and the Bulls won their fifth title in seven years. And yes, we do now have more information at our disposal than we did 20 years ago in the now long-distant 20th century. But that's what retconning does. It takes information from the now and overwrites it on top of stories of the past, regardless of whether or not that information was available at that time. Jordan played through difficult circumstances that were described by Marv Albert on the national broadcast that night as flu-like symptoms, and yet he put together a game that is still thought of as one of the top moments in NBA history, and it's a testament to his fortitude and to his will. The NBA, NCAA, and the other sports organizations did the right thing to suspend competition temporarily and to take a pause to make informed decisions as to how to proceed. It's going to be a long road ahead, but it shouldn't be one that affects your view of the part of the road already traveled. Jordan's flu game was one for the ages. That is how it should always be seen. But your take on retconning is how you are going to see this moment from now on.
Will you see it? And as for most of you, it will be to continue to see it. As one of the greatest athletes of all time, powering through a night when his body wasn't 100%, probably not even 75%, to record one of the most heroic efforts in sports history. Or, if you believe in retconning and revisionist history, will you now look at Jordan's performance through flu-like symptoms as the selfish display of a person who is more interested in his own individual stats and diabolical quest for glory to win one for the thumb with no regard for the safety, health, and well-being of others and playing that night at the possible expense of being patient zero and exposing the entire association and quite possibly the country to an infectious disease that could cripple a nation and its economy. Well, that's up to you.